Good morning. It's 11 October 2024. We're going to start off with Florida, Milton, and Corey Mills, and then we will fly back up to North Carolina and give you some updates. This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. Representative Corey Mills of Florida wants Floridians in his district to know that he has uh, contacts with all of the agencies and has put disaster relief in place. So screenshot this little graphic or go grab it off my community wall. It was posted earlier today. I hear the train is coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine. <laughs> I don't know when. I'm stuck in holes of bread. That time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps her rolling. All down the bad Just a baby. My mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't ever play with God. As you can see, that convoy is going into Black Mountain, Carolina, North Carolina, sorry, and the people who reported to this ex-member said they hadn't seen a single FEMA truck. Well, the truth of the matter is FEMA trucks can't get in there. The vehicles you saw, other than ATVs, there's a couple of dune buggies, or at least that's what we call them in Michigan. They are um, frame, engine, seat, transmission, and a steering wheel, essentially, and they are built in Michigan to go up and down the sand dunes on our um, west coast, the adjoining Lake Michigan. They're not built for this terrain to haul cargo. The most they can haul is maybe a Starlink and a small generator or a Jackery, and that's it, because they're built most of the time for single person operation. Nevertheless, because their frame is so light and it's stripped down to the bare minimum, they can get places that other uh, vehicles can't. They're sort of halfway in between an ATV and a side-by-side, -side, just uh, for point of reference, as far as weight and carrying capacity. And so they're using whatever vehicles they have at hand to get back there, but understand that this terrain is still very unstable. It is not only um, in most places, the rivers and streams are in a different place than the course that they have had for decades, but there are freshwater springs underneath all of this running all along the mountains and valleys, and those springs may some of them very well may have collapsed and the water is trying to find a different route down the mountain so it makes all of this terrain very unstable and that leads us very nicely into a report from sean Hendricks from yesterday i think i've featured him at least once before he has been in the black mountain area and the chimney rock area either driving in supplies or interviewing, in the case of Chimney Rock, the mayor to find out what the mayor needs. So let's hear a good news update from Sean. All right, a little mission update. Uh, feeling better, two nights of sleep, and uh, appreciate the concern, but I am feeling much better today. Uh, big news, we have a plane. 
I've got a guy that's going to fly for us, and uh, he's flying for another mission, but he's basically going to link Greenville, where I'm at, with the hardest hit areas out there. And now they can work with me to get supplies and high-end items that they need to build these, these operational centers, and I don't need to spend 10 hours a day on the road. I can do what I do best, which is network and get equipment. And uh, so I just dropped them off eight Starlinks, gave them a couple of generators, some jackets to fill in the extra space. Also, the first star drop kit went out, uh, which is a solar panel, a generator, solar generator, and a Starlink Mini. These people can backpack into these areas to get comms going. Uh, some more donations came in last night, so I was able to go out and spend about 5000 bucks this morning. I'm able to pay for his fuel. Each flight's about four or 500 bucks in gas each way. So uh, I really appreciate the donations. And uh, this is making a huge difference. These communities are cut off for six to eight months without power. So we're working with local churches to set up these operation centers so people can come in and charge phones, use the internet, have some semblance of a normal life while you live without power for six months. I know Hurricane Milton is barreling down on Florida. We love you guys down there. We're thinking about you. Um, there's still a recovery effort up here as well. And I know you guys have reached out and said, hey, we're not given to one thing or another. We're given to a lot of different things. And that just blows my mind. There's so much need out there and you guys are being so generous that uh, just wanted, wanted to say like you guys making this happen. Like this guy flying, he's flying off people's donations. You know, as private citizens, we don't have the funds to run multi-week, multi-month recovery operations. And it's just too agile of work for the government to handle. It's just too specific to dis, you know, it's these people in the middle of nowhere. So anyhow, enough said, you guys made this happen. Appreciate it. And I don't know what else to say, but thank you. I want to talk for one minute or maybe two about misinformation, disinformation, and accusations of the same. This channel has developed a list of people who are boots on the ground who are either from North Carolina themselves and in the case of Jeremy Faison he is a state representative for Eastern Tennessee for a district in Eastern Tennessee and when I bring you reports from various people it's because I see them posting consistent information that I've also seen other people report. What do I mean by that? Well, Sean is in Greenville, South Carolina, where there's a working airport, and he has been driving supplies out, as he said, 10-hour trips both ways. Well, now he has a, a pilot who's willing to help him as, long, as well as his other um, people he's working for. Corey Mills, I mean, he's a Florida state represent or Florida U.S. Congress representative. I'm confident that what Corey Mills publishes is accurate to the best of his ability at the time he publishes it. Mr. Guns and Gear, well, let me just interrupt myself and bring you good news from Mr. Guns and Gear. I went out to find something else. Uh, and found Mr. Guns and Gears update along with Sawyer water filtration system from Sawyer.com. Welcome back, everyone. Quick video here to let you know about a company that is supporting Americans who are out in the mountains of West North Carolina as well as Eastern Tennessee. So I reached out to Sawyer uh, probably three days ago at this point, asked that they'd be willing to send some water filtration products out that we could distribute through our network. Uh, in mountains and they were all about it. Uh, basically, they just asked where they're going, who they're going to, like in terms of region. And I let them obviously decide what to send because they know best. And they sent out these, they sent out 60 of these. These are two gallon water filters that hang. There is a water filter on the inside. Hopefully you guys can see that there, but I actually hold it up and don't move around a ton. And basically what that does is it attaches right here. And this is where you put your water in or you dunk it into a source of fresh water. And this will give you quite literally tens of thousands of gallons of clean water from each system. Again, they sent 60 of them out. These will be headed down to Paraclete XP tomorrow and be flown out and will be in the hands of the people that need them in 24 hours. So big thanks to the folks over at Sawyer for supporting the cause. That's great news. And we thank Mr. Guns and Gear as well as Sawyer Water Filtration from Sawyer.com for that bit of assistance to people out in rural areas who, who are still trapped and can't get out. I have it 
via personal response from Sean Hendricks that he's working on something with LifeStraw. So as soon as we get mention of that, we will bring you that information as well. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it as always. And pray for these people who are going out into remote areas that they themselves can remain healthy, rested, and sharp. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.